Hi, this is Dave Edstrom. I'm the CEO slash CTO for Virtual Photons Electrons. And today I'm going to go through and show you how to set up eight MT Connect simulators talking to one agent. And before I do that, I just want to talk about the environment that I'm running in here. So this is on a Mac, but what I'm running is VMware with Windows 10. And the logic behind that is moving this over to run under Unix or Linux will be very easy to do. So let me just give some overview here. Uh, the uh, purpose of this is really not to dig into super low levels on MT Connect. And the reason for that is because you can go out to my blog and you can see the three A's of MT Connect, which are the adapter, the agent, and the application. And in about 10 minutes, I will take you through that at my blog. But for today, I'm just going to reference that so you can go out and hit it. And it's really simply about how to set up these eight simulators to run to a single agent. Now, just as a reminder, you can go out to agent.mtconnect.org and run the simulator. Here you see the XML that comes up. If we pass it a parameter such as current, you will see that it uses the CSS or cascading style sheet to format it in a nicer format. Memex also has a simulator that's running. It's actually using uh, the similar simulator in terms of the parts file, but this is running 1.3.0.16, which is the latest version. Uh, of the um, MT Connect. And I'm going to go through and pull up some windows to show you how to get this going. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay. So the the way the simulator works is it is a Ruby executable that reads in a data file and the data file is a simulation of a machine tool making a part. It could be actual data that's captured and in this case from NIST we're using actual data from eight different machine tools. And that data gets passed over to the agent in what's called shutter format, simple hierarchical data representation format and then it is viewed from a browser or from an MT Connect client app such as shop for, uh, shop for monitoring app and you can view it from there. So let's take a look at the, the different components. If we look at the simulator here, the simulator simply goes through and it starts up a number of bat files and what you notice is that it starts these up on different ports. And the reason for that is, is that it'll be speaking to a single process, so the process will need to know what ports these are speaking on. And when I start this, you'll see that um, what happens is eight different DOS windows will get started. Over here, let's take a look at um, some of the files. And uh, this directory is showing where the agent config looks. And before we do that, let's take a look at the start NIST agent .bat file. And you can see here that it is uh, very simple. There is also a debug file that's out there that provides a little bit more information when it starts up. Um, and you can see that here. And let's take a look at what the configuration file actually looks like because when you look at this you'll see that the agent.exe starts up and it starts up in debug mode and it reads the agent.config. So what does that agent.config look like? Well the agent.config has at the beginning uh, which devices are, are out there and has a number of parameters uh, that get read in. Some are the default such as port 5000 the default here you can see the different adapters. Um, 127.0.0.1 is localhost, and then you see the different ports. What's important here is that each of these are on their own, on their own ports, 
And then you see the schemas uh, that are set up, um, the style sheets uh, and you know some logos. And so that this is sort of some housekeeping stuff, just sort of dressed up nicely. One of the important files is the .xsd file, which is the XML schema uh, database file, the XML schema uh, file. And then you see in terms of where it gets logged and, and so forth. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start up the simulators first. And when, when I start the simulators, what you'll see is that there will be eight DOS windows get started, and they're going to be waiting to talk to an agent. So let me just spread these out a little bit. And I know that this is getting a little bit busy here. And that's fine. But I'm doing this just sort of to, to make a point. This is, um, again, what's nice about this, and you'll see later where this becomes uh, beneficial, is instead of just having one simulator that you're going through, uh, you're having eight different simulators or eight different machine tools that are creating eight different parts. And so it's a little bit more realistic than just having one simulator. Uh, and it, I think it demos a little bit nicer. So you'll notice all of these basically say the same thing. They start up a Ruby script, and you see where it's showing that. That's what .rb is. And then it is waiting on a TCP server on a particular port. Here you see 7882, 7883, and it's essentially waiting on the empty connect agent to get started. So over here, I'm going to start up the uh, empty connect agent. And I'm going to start it in debug mode. And when I start in debug mode, we're going to see a few messages that will pop up. Uh, that are a little bit anomalous here. Nothing to worry about. But what's important is what you see on the left in terms of let's watch what happens on these simulators. So when I start these up, what you'll notice is that all the simulators now are sending data. And it's going through and sending data uh, as if a machine tool is actually working. Now, some of these you'll see some pauses because that was the nature of what the machine tool is doing. So here we're seeing uh, what's called shutter data, simple hierarchical data representation. And it's very simple data. It's uh, a timestamp, and the timestamp is the uh, standard Greenwich timestamp, uh, Zulu time. And then you see key value pairs. And so you can see that these machine tools are going through and, and running um, at different speeds. And again, this is how the timing was set up to create these parts. So how to think about each of these is it's a machine tool that is making parts. And this is exactly what the machine tool is doing at, at this particular time. So that's all well and good uh, that we're doing this. And then the agent uh, would be um, also in debug mode information there to see what, what's going on. But where it becomes a little bit more visual is let's go over to the browser so we can see what's happening here. Okay. Now let's take a look at what end users really care about. and That is, it's more than just, for example, looking at XML here at agent.mtconnect.org or doing a current Again, this is the simulated part tool being created or going out to simulator.memxoe.com. I'd showed what NIST is doing here, and this is very nice. Um, it's showing things in a textual format, but plants and shops really want to have something a little bit more graphical. And so an example of doing that is there are certainly paid applications that are out there for shop floor monitoring. Something that's available for free is a package called Merlin Optime. And what this is doing here is it is going out and talking to the simulated devices and it's talking to them on port 7000. Just that's how uh, the default configuration is on, on Merlin Optime. 
And what's nice about this is that it shows a trend. You see it shows uh, some dials. It shows what, what's going on here. So this is something that you see which is more in line with real shop floor monitoring applications. Now, obviously, they'll get much more detailed than this, but this is just showing some graphics and trends, and there's reporting and so forth that goes along with it. But the point is, is that everything that I showed you today is available for free. And where a lot of this exists in terms of the demos is if we go out to GitHub, dot com, empty connect. Um, you will see when we go out here uh, and we can go to the agent, click on that, and then we can go out and we can see where the simulator is and we can download the simulator. There are readme files that uh, show you exactly what uh, needs to happen. And so you can go out to, to GitHub to get all of this uh, information to really understand what's going on um, with the simulator itself. You know, very, very valuable information uh, that's, that's out here. So again, this is Dave Edstrom. I'm CEO slash CTO of Virtual Photons Electrons. You can get more information about MT Connect in terms of the three A's. Um, watch that to have a better feeling. And hopefully, after watching this, that you now have confidence to go out. And if you want to start learning more about MT Connect, that you can start up these eight simulators with the agent and then get a much better feel in terms of what's going on. I will have at my blog for this the links out to Dropbox to pull down all the binaries and configuration files that I referenced. Uh, as I mentioned, a number of these are already out at github slash github.com slash mtconnect. So thank you for uh, watching today and any feedback, please pass it on to me in the comments at my blog. Thank you.